Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. Um, today I'm gonna show you how to make some texture sheets for polymer clay using wallpaper samples. Um, I went to my, years back in 2014, I went to, um, I go to Diamond Vogel in my town here and um, I don't use anybody else for house paint because I swear by their paint. I'm telling you, it is like one coat and you're done and it's amazing, lasts and is brilliant, brilliant paint. Anyway, they also deal in wallpaper and um, back when I was in art school, I asked them about it and they said, you know, we have a bunch of retired uh, wallpaper sample books if you want them and I was like ah uh, yes I do want those please and I took like eight of them home and I still have them all here and was boxing some paper samples up for a friend of mine because she wanted to use some in some artwork and um I thought oh wow I have so much textured paper I'm gonna try this and make some texture sheets and it worked great so here's some of the ones that I posted um the other day on a, a polymer clay group that I'm in called Jessima Tutorials Polymer Clay Community I love it, um, but this these are some of the ones that I already baked, and I'm I'm happy with them, but I'm also kind of a perfectionist, so I'm probably gonna go back and make them again. This one I I took all I took my Dremel to all of these and kind of cleaned up some of the stuff, but and you know I actually used uh, I I used them and made some impressions and they looked really nice, so I'll show you that in a little bit. But to start with, you're gonna want um, I just rolled out some scrap clay on my thickest setting, which is a two millimeter, I believe. And I'm gonna use, you know, this sheet here and I've got my tissue blade. And then um, the only other thing you need really is, or not need, but if you'd like, if you're not happy with the texture that you get just from the initial impression, um, I use these tools, the clay tools. Um, and I need to get my acrylic roller. I hope you guys have an acrylic roller because that helps tremendously. Okay, so I have that. So let's get started. <clears throat> I take, oh, excuse the noise. My son is mowing the lawn right now and I just didn't want to wait too much longer to get this done. So he'll be done soon. Anyways, I take the clay and put it on top of the sheet as opposed to the other way around. So I just place this right down. And to start with, it doesn't, it wants to like lift off the sheet, so you wanna be careful. And so I played with just doing my fingers, but I felt like the clay kept sticking to my fingers. So the best results that I've had is taking a piece of white printer paper, place it down on top of your clay, and just start burnishing. And you wanna burnish the whole piece. And you can feel it right away. You can feel the paper pushing through the clay. Because it's wallpaper, if you push too hard, you might think that the wallpaper itself is gonna squish flat. It doesn't. I mean, it does. It might. I don't know. I haven't experienced it. But it's still, the impression still shows up on the clay. So I'm just gonna go through and burnish this really well. I'm pushing down pretty hard. I'm not, I'm not hurting myself, but I just wanna make sure that it's all good in there. And then I take my roller and I roll over it just a little bit with the paper still on. And then I peel this off. And I can already see the back side of this piece coming through. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's already really textured in there, which is nice. But I'm gonna do one more roll with just my roller right over the top and not too hard, but not, you know, where it's not gonna make any difference. All right, so then when that's done, and you don't, I mean, obviously you're not gonna spray this with water or anything like that, that comes later. So I'm gonna peel this off very carefully. So you don't stretch your image too much and there you have the first one easy peasy and if you're happy with the um, amount of impression that you get in the clay from that don't do anything with it what I'm doing is I wanted a little bit deeper of an impression so I start with this guy it's a larger and smaller and on the larger little circles I'll just go in and push it down just a little bit. The main thing is, what I did notice on the other ones, is I had a lot of cleanup to do when I was done baking because I was just went really fast last time. So in this new one, I'm gonna take my time and make sure that I don't have a whole bunch of odd streaks of clay. When you're using clay tools, I'm sure if anybody's had that experience, um, clay can kind of, it'll pull 
you'll you'll get like globs of clay as you start using ball tools. So you just want to be gentle with your hands and go through and you can already see the difference. But I just I wanted to make sure on this particular sheet for sure that I was really careful with um, the, the levels, the different levels of uh, pulling the clay, it can make like ridges and things like that that I didn't want. I was not really excited about those in the end. But you know, also it, it, for other people really like that organic look where there's just overloaded texture and that's okay too. So you don't have to do any of this. You can do whatever you want, of course. I'm not even giving you permission because you do you and I'll do me. So um, yeah. This is essentially, I'm not gonna go too far on each one because I don't want you to be here forever. So, um, but I think I've done enough of this to give you the, the gist of what I was shooting for before baking is make sure, and you don't wanna, you know, with your ball tool, you don't wanna push down so that the bottom part is flat and then you just have ridges, you know, on, on look at your design and follow it with your tool and do the best you can. I mean, obviously you're not gonna generate what the pattern company made or what the wallpaper company made, but um, but you can do your best to get it close. So I'll hold this up and you can see the difference already in the depth. So you're gonna get a lot deeper of an impression if you're using ball tools. So there's that one. Let's do a little bit bigger of a piece here. Oh, and by the way, before I even started this, I just, when I was mixing my scrap clay um, and I rolled it out, I went and burnished all these beforehand so that I could get rid of air bubbles and stuff. Um, I just tend to, I, don't, I think I mix it or I think I put it in the pasta machine, right? I've watched lots of tutorials, but I still get air bubbles. So I go through with, again, that computer paper and I just burnish the flat piece. You can usually, when you do that, you can feel like little air bubbles popping up. Another thing that I've learned lately too is when you're laying clay down onto a flat tile like this, you wanna, I, I almost think of it as like I'm gonna put a decal on something and I'll start with one end and I'll just gently use my finger and lay it down so that it doesn't, it, sometimes when you plop clay down on a surface, you'll trap air underneath and that just bothers me to no end. So I just go through and kind of try to lay it down real gently. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna use this guy here because this one I really like the texture. I really like the flowers. I think they're great and they would make all on the texture sheet. There's so many little areas where I could put just an impression on a little pair of earrings, but I wasn't thrilled with the outcome of the first one that I made. So I'm going to use, I'm gonna try to get like, I don't know, my camera is kind of close, but I'm gonna try to get like an angled deal, but I didn't roll out a ton of clay either, so. Let's see, I think, oh no, I'm going the wrong way, sorry. So I'm gonna lift this up and put this down and I'm just gonna lay my clay. Now I've flipped it over because I want the burnished side to go down onto the um, wallpaper sheet. So I think I'm just gonna lay it right like this. I think that'll be good just like that. I'll get a good background texture and good floral, I think. Let's, yeah, I think that's where I wanna go. Maybe up a little higher. Okay, so I've got it at an angle there. I'm gonna take my computer paper and I'm gonna start burnishing. Listening to Vivaldi today. This is um, actually Andrea Marcone and the Venice Baroque Orchestra, or Venice Baroque Orchestra. I don't listen to a ton of classical music, but I do like it and I thought it was apropos for this video. Because a lot of the other stuff I listen to, I don't know, I'm all over the place with music. The only thing I don't really listen to much of is country, or if any, because I just have never been a fan. But I gotta have music when you create art, don't you think? I do. It's it's what keeps me moving. So I, my library is massive with so much different music. It's all day. And comedy. I'm a big stand-up comedy fan, so I have loads of comedy on my, on everywhere, on all my Apple stuff. All right, so that's pretty good, I think. I'm gonna take my roller again and roll over it. 
You can turn it too, so I roll with the length of the clay better. Ooh, that wasn't good. Uh oh, I hope I don't get a ghost image. Shoot. Oh no. Might have to do that one again. We'll see. Let's peel it off. Yeah, I got a ghost image. That's a bummer. Well, bear with me. I'm just gonna um, get this rolled back out. Because I only have one more square that's already rolled out and I don't wanna use that one yet. So let's do this again real quick. You know, it, it just comes with the territory. Sometimes it just makes mistakes, huh? So, all right. I want it more of a triangle, actually. Or not triangle, rectangle. So I'm gonna just get it into a better rectangle shape because I wanted it just a little taller or longer than a square. Yeah, that should be good. All right, I'm gonna just lay this down again and burn this quick. Get a new piece or somewhat new. Ooh, I don't really feel many air spots in, or air bubbles in that one at all, so must have put that through right. All right, so that's good. And then I'm just going to trim the edges off a little bit. I don't need it super big. I mean, everything that I make is smaller jewelry, like earrings. I do some cabochons, but I just started in January, and, and I didn't want to get overwhelmed. In the future, I'll be making some clock faces, which some of these textures would be really cool for. Um, probably some, I definitely want to go, I want to make some keychains too. I think that would be fun. So well, I don't think this piece is as big as the first one that I used, but that's okay. So let's start that again and maybe just be a little calmer when I go to roll my acrylic roller over the sheet. So burnish side down, place on top of the area that you want to get the impression. And now that it's a little smaller, maybe I'll turn it. Okay, I think I'm gonna be happy with that right there. But my fingers, oh, the clay likes to stick to them. So let's grab this paper again, and I'm gonna start burnishing. I think that's probably pretty good. I can feel the pattern, but this is a much lower relief than the pebbles that we first did or that whatever you want to call that. So, um, yeah, it, it doesn't come through on your fingers when you're burnishing as much as some of the deeper ones, obviously. So I'm going to turn this again. We're going to roll. Oh, and slow. And that's probably exactly why that happened this la on that last try was because this relief is so low, you gotta go a little slower so that the paper doesn't pull off. When it's a deeper relief, the paper will stick better, but in this case, just gotta go a little slower. So, and then I'm gonna take the roller over it one more time, real slow so it doesn't lift off the page, and I can see that texture coming through really nicely now. And then I'm just gonna peel this off, and again, just peel it off slow so you don't distort your image. And that looks great. That's a good one. And I like that I have some simple plain texture here and then some of the flowers here and here because like I said, I'm not gonna be using a full image of anything. So, and I think I'm gonna bake it just like this because when I went and embellished this one, I think, or with my tools, I just think it got too deep and it, it I'll show you, I'll, I'll use this as an example of what it looks like once it's baked and when you do your own impression on it. So anyways, I'm gonna try one just not doing anything with my ball tools or any cutting tools or anything like that. So I'm gonna set that one aside and I will show you. On this sheet that is my last sheet that's there, I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's do, let's just lay it down and you can stick 
Oh, whoops. You know what? I forgot one major thing. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. See, I'm so not a pro. Okay. So because this is baked and clay is very sticky and likes to stick to clay, I just want to spray it with some water. So I'm just going to mist it with a little water. You don't need it set like soaking wet, but you want enough water on there where the clay isn't going to get stuck in your texture sheet. So I think that's probably just fine right there. So now I'm gonna lay this down right on top. Oh, let's just go right there. Put my computer paper down. And obviously the computer paper now is gonna get a little wet because this is wet. So burnish, same thing. You're just gonna go through and burnish your clay. I think that's probably pretty good. I'm gonna use my roller. Because it's wet, this clay wants to peel off. And I think it moved a little bit, so I don't wanna take the roller back over it again. But this is the impression that I got from that one. So that's pretty good. There's some areas that aren't awesome, but most of them are pretty good. And I can now take, you know, I don't have any, I didn't pull out any other cutters, but I, even if I just wanted a round earring and I wanted one that's got maybe just a little bit of leaf and some flower in it. And you, so you can kind of still tell what it is, but it's not giving you the whole image. But I see this, as a very cute, let's see. I like it right here, this is good. This would make a really cute pair of earrings. Right there, just like that. And I can lift it up. And I don't necessarily like having my earrings match. I mean, I want them to match enough, but I don't need them to match match. So then I would take another section and let's just go right here. Why not? This would be cute. And then I'll bake it and um, then maybe use some mica powder or I'd probably put some mica powder on it now. Um, or I will go through and use paint. Um, you could use liquid Sculpey or clay to fill in the indents. But for me, this just isn't deep enough. Like I feel like because of the flowers, I'd want this to get a little deeper. So then I would go through with my ball tool and just work on embellishing the lines just a little bit more, but only where it's already sunken down. It's the opposite when you're making the texture sheet, then you're working on the other side. But um, and here with this little tool, I can go through and make these lines a little bit more noticeable, nothing major. And also, um, one of the things that I've learned in doing polymer clay is the better you can get your piece before you bake, the easier it is when it's done for sure. But it also, um, you really want to pay attention to like the back and getting your edges nice and clean. And so I would, if I'm gonna keep working on these, I would take the time and make sure that all of this stuff was really nice and clean before I put it in the oven to bake. And that way when I go, I use a tumbler to polish and sand my pieces. I use a vibratory tumbler. So that way when I go and put this in a vibratory tumbler, it's not gonna, um, it, it'll just clean it up. It's not gonna wreck any of the shape or anything like that. But if I leave it really kind of messy, it's not gonna do such a great job. It doesn't, I mean, it does a wonderful job of sanding, but you need it, you really need your pieces to be as clean and as almost, you know, almost finished, except it, they need sanding and cleaning up, that's all. And that's just one of the things I've noticed. I think I'm gonna go around the outside of this flower a little bit, even though it's, and just give it a little bit of an outline. And I'll show you up close what this looks like as soon as I'm done. 
This shouldn't take too long. I'm almost, I'm at a point where I can stop here, so. But yeah, you can see the difference. After doing a little bit of burnishing, or not burnishing, tool work. You know, and you could have a really cute pair of earrings. Now, I wouldn't use scrap clay to do that. Um, I, I would go back and redo this and do it in like another colored clay. But you get the idea. And this scrap clay isn't bad. I just probably wouldn't, I wouldn't do much with this. Anyways, um, if I have anything else, I'm trying to think if I have anything else I need to show you. Just remember, you can use these tools. Remember to burnish. Um, oh yeah, I, I made this stamp. This was just, not, I didn't use any kind of texture. I just cut out and I haven't baked it yet and I'm still just kind of working on sculpting it, but I think this would make a cute stamp. I'm gonna use this little wood piece here to put it in and make a handle. And yeah, so I'm just playing around with textures. It's fun and I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, subscribe to my channel because I'll keep posting more stuff. I have an um, exciting tool that I just made recently to clean a clay extruder. Um, and yeah, that, other than that, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, bye.